Alright guys, I'm here to talk about Fallout 4. Um, I just loaded a save file over here and what I want to go ahead and do is just talk about the game a little bit. So the main thing I'm going to be talking about here is what I don't like about the game, what I don't like about the plot and the story and I'm just playing a, a character I've already finished the game with here. I'm just going to run through a random area that I haven't explored here just to kind of have something going on in the background. So th the main thing I'm going to be talking about here is going to be the main things I dislike about Fallout 4, the main thing I dislike about the story. Now I know there's people that have done like best five things, worst five things or whatever, and just get some shit out of the way. I don't care if the graphics suck on PC, these textures are garbage, someone's going to put something out for that, that's fine. The shooting controls, the X and Y axis aren't on the same speed level, so to speak. So like you, I believe it's the left to right is faster than the up to down. So the aiming is a little bit wonky unless you change your settings in there. Um, the field of view is a little bit low for PC. It's set to 70 by default, but I think I changed it to 90. It kind of looks the same to me, but um, I'm playing on 2560 by 1440 instead of uh, 1920 by 1080, so that might be why. So those things out of the way, we're really going I'm gonna be talking about the story. What I don't like about the story, the setup for Fallout 4. So there's gonna be a lot of spoilers here. I'm probably gonna say fuck a lot involuntarily. So forgive me for that. But I'm I'm gonna talk about the story specifically, what I don't like about the story and how it was executed. So the main thing is the the way the game starts off is you're the lone wanderer, you can pick the male or the female, um, and you go through the game finding your son Sean. The idea is that they drop a nuke, you're from pre-war uh, Massachusetts, Boston, whatever, and you're put into a cryogenic stasis with your wife and your son, and your son is kidnapped. And I think the setup for the game is fine. It's really similar to Fallout 3, where Fallout 3 is a little bit in reverse, and you're the son looking for the father instead. So this this game they have the other way around. That's fine. You're not messing too much with the formula. You had lots of success with Fallout 3. It was a really well put together game. The issue comes in when you you change a lot of things down the road in the in the storyline. You don't give your player a lot of options. So a lot of people have been talking about how they don't like the uh, the limited options that are available in Fallout 4, and it's something that irks me as well. So in Fallout 4, there's four four main factions. I believe it's four. So you have the Institute, you have the Minutemen, you have the Brotherhood of Steel, and you have the Railroad. So those are your more, your your main four factions in the game. And what happens is, no matter who you progress within the game, because you get the opportunity to meet to meet everyone, you get to meet the Brotherhood. You get, everyone you get to meet. So. My main gripe here is that even though you get an opportunity to... Is this person evil too? I don't know. They're dead. But even though you get an opportunity to play with each of the factions, you don't get an opportunity to really make any drastic changes. And when you actually get to make a choice of which faction you side with, it's it's all of a sudden. So. When I was playing, I started off with the Brotherhood of Steel. That's the one I just advanced the most with in the game. Even though you start with the Minutemen. I advanced the most with the Brotherhood of Steel. And even though I wasn't too crazy about the faction, I was just like, oh, well, I'm just going to go down the quest line and I'll go ahead and finish the main one eventually. It drops the bombshell on you after you accept a quest, after you've met the other factions, then all of a sudden you're going to go hostile with the Railroad and the Institute. And... I don't like the way that that was done. To me, that's saying, hey, your opinion doesn't matter what you want to do here. And when you go down the quest line for the Brotherhood of Steel, one of the things that you learn is that Paladin Dance is a synth. And you're able to talk Elder Maxon out of killing Paladin Dance because of the good stuff he does if you have high enough charisma, and he gets to live as a synth. So with that, I kind of come under the impression of well if I could talk him into that I should be able to talk him into other things I should be able to talk other players and other things and that's one of the few times you're really able to do that and that bothers me a lot a lot of times you don't get an option to really do what you want to do in the game you don't get an opportunity to say 
hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be part of your faction. And that's annoying because coming from the other Fallouts, from Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, when you get so many damn options as to who you can side with, what you can do for the, um, the side quests. Are these guys actually friendly? I don't know. I'm going to save it. I like to do that a lot. Save the game in case I make a decision I don't like. Or they pigeonhole me into a decision. So, let's go ahead and talk to him here. Okay, so it's a quest. So, what really annoys me there is, again, they, they really pigeonhole you into a certain ending. In like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, you had a lot more options and they were all different. This one is a lot more yes, no, sarcasm, and maybe a charisma thing if you're lucky. And there aren't a lot of charisma things. There aren't a lot of um, you know ability special checks or anything like that. So it's really frustrating that they went that route. I'm gonna go ahead and run through this quest real quick. Okay, so they're drug dealers. I'll just skip through this. Okay, so random drug dealers in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that's it's fine. It's okay if you want to put me down the road, do that. But the thing is, with Fallout and the series of like Skyrim and all that, this is the first game I've really felt that the quest or whatever faction you choose really has a huge bearing on the story. Now I know in Skyrim, every now and then you'd have a quest where you had to kill someone for one guild and it stopped you from getting another quest for another guild. That's fine. This is completely different. This is you're killing off two entire factions and from a story standpoint, I think it's for bullshit reasons. When you talk about the Institute initially in the game, they're kind of freak the fuck out of me. Um, blah, 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 blah. Kill him, kill him, kill him. I pretty much only use VATS in the game right now. Like, again, the shooting system is really improved, but I have a lot of points in the VATS and luck. So normally I get crits on it, where you don't get crits if you just sit here and blast the guy in the face. And when you do that, it's kind of boring, honestly. Uh, the even though it's a you know first person, third person shooter, the actual the actual system that you use uh, in order to shoot things. At, I mean, it's kind of dull because every enemy just runs in a fucking straight line for you, or stands behind cover and shoots shit. So. It's not like you really get a lot of unique experiences. Uh, yeah, you get like assault trons and stuff where they hit like fucking trucks, but it's not really doing a lot gameplay wise. So, it, so, since they shove you into one of the factions and they make you kill off the other two, I think it's stupid because you don't get the opportunity to do a lot on one playthrough with the character. You don't get the ability to say, hey, I'm going to play this character and you know go through all the faction quests and get all the cool items I can you could straight up have like one quest in with the railroad and one quest in um, with the Institute and then it's just kill them both off and why like when you're given the reason why it's kinda poor because Elder Maxon's first like we need to kill all the sense and everyone that's not human um, and he's pretty non-transparent about that why the fuck you gonna let me say paladin dance you're not gonna let me say no fuck you or let's do something else it's just straight up let's fucking nuke him even as the Minutemen, where the Minutemen makes zero sense to do that, you say, oh, well, fuck them. We're just going to kill them because everyone says the Institute's bad. Now, again, looking at the plot hole, so you're chasing after Sean. You find out that Sean's father. You find out the father's actually 60 years old as opposed to the 10 years that you're initially led to believe by Kellogg. Um, and, you know, seeing the, the little baby Sean in his dreams or whatever. So... You go through all that, but then again, it leaves you with more fucking plot holes. Why would, obviously Kellogg would know, hey, this guy right here, 
is not your fucking son. He's a fucking synth. I don't have a real reason to hide that from you because, you know, what's the point? He doesn't really seem to care about this dude. He's just in it for the money. And, I mean, you literally get more backstory on fucking Kellogg than you get on Father and yourself as a character. Like, what? Why do you have more information? You have a bigger fucking dream sequence that you saw right out of Inception about what the fuck Kellogg's life was like. You get to see Kellogg as a fucking kid. You get to see Kellogg as, uh, you know, an older guy. You get to see him as a teenager in his 20s, his 30s, whatever. You get that whole fucking backstory on Kellogg. You get to dive into his brain and see all of his shit. But all of a sudden, you go into the fucking game and you don't know, you barely know shit about Sean. You barely know shit about yourself. And you don't really get any options to make a story other than, oh, I was in the military and I was frozen and that's my story and my son was stolen and like so frustrating and I mean I get it like they explain that you know Kellogg the reason that Kellogg is um, so young relatively to everyone okay this guy just fucking showed up out of nowhere awesome what a fucking great spawning system there's no one in front of me I press a button boom right in my face regular ass guy not even a synth that they could like teleport in but so so they do that and then okay so it's a fucking death claw fucking blast him in the head so they do that that's fine i get it so you you've pre preserved his life with you know robotic synth stuff in order to make him live longer okay there's two two death claws fun But I mean, this is the fight. It's like, all right, we're gonna have some fucking giant ass dust claws running around, doing all kinds of shit. Just fucking shoot them while they run around like idiots. Well, the AI hasn't gone anywhere in the last few games. Um, but you're back on topic. So we're, we're talking about Sean and the story. So if Sean's father, you find out it's Sean's father, he's the leader of the institute, and he still leaves you with a fucking million questions, like. Obviously, the Institute is kidnapping people because they're kidnapping synths. That's fine. Okay, so why does everyone think the Institute's bad if the Institute knows they're synths? And I get the Institute doesn't want to talk to anyone, but they could literally be like, oh yeah, all those people we kidnapped, they're synths. Everyone's scared as fuck about synths anyway. So I don't think they would have an issue saying that they're taking care of them. No one would have a goddamn issue in the world with that. People would probably want to be in the Institute because it's so nice and fancy when you actually go ahead and visit it, but at what point does at what point does everyone say well we need to blow up the institute the Minutemen want to blow it up the railroad wants to blow it up and I think the railroad is actually very understandable for wanting to blow it up because they're synths and they don't want to do bitch work all day that makes perfect sense fine Brotherhood of Steel they're always talking about oh we want to have technology in order to better mankind Okay, that's valid. I see that's why you're using these fucking power armors everywhere. And even though you're doing that, you want to blow up the fucking institute for no goddamn reason. You can literally take it over, use all the technology. You could probably, you would think you could talk to your father and say, hey, maybe we should help out the rest of the world. You don't get those fucking options. You get blow up the other two factions because the fucking plot writing is obviously complete ass from a professional story writer that has done like a grade movies i don't i don't understand it it's not even like a plot twist that father's 60 or all this shit or that you find out he has cancer because if he has fucking cancer and you can make Kellogg a fucking mercenary who's always fighting shit live to be 120 you, there's no sense shit you could use for yourself you haven't figured out the cure for cancer even though you have fucking robots that are like humans i don't understand it and then if you look even closer into the plot, I mean, if he's from the Institute and the Institute purposely kidnapped him, why not take someone else? Why is Sean the only fucking kid in the vault? Why is it the only vault where they're fucking freezing people? And I know that they say it's one of the most advanced ones in the beginning of the game, and no one asks shit about it because obviously they're in a situation where they're getting nuked. It's not really a concern. But, I mean, how are you going to do that and not answer any of the questions? Sean says he looks over the file 
in order to figure out what the fuck's going on. Does this guy look hostile? Yup, he's a mercenary. So, I mean, there's, there's not another family in the entire fucking suburbs, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me, because... I mean, you, you saw the neighborhood in the beginning of the goddamn game. That's a fucking family neighborhood. You're going to tell me the only fucking kid in the entire neighborhood is Sean, and he's a baby. I don't understand. And even if that was the case, if they only wanted someone with non-nuclear radioactive blood, why not take one of the other 50 people in the vault? Why shoot the other 50 people in the vault? Why unfreeze everyone at the same time? Even if there was an option where you had to unfreeze everyone at the same time, it probably takes another fucking five seconds to flip the switch and no one would have seen you coming through anyway to get the one person at the end of the vault. So, it's just, it's all really stupid. And for the Institute to be this all-knowing, technology-focused institution, it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem logical to me. It doesn't seem like something that would happen. So, I mean, why go about making the story that way? And the story starts off really good, uh, right up until about you have, you have to go to Diamond City, which is stupid because you can't walk straight to Diamond City because they're super mutants. So you have to do some of the bullshit side quests just in order to have enough gear. Maybe if you do it on easy or very easy, it's possible. And in which case, you could probably run through the quest in like four or five hours, I wouldn't doubt. I ended up finishing the game about 24 hours while trying to go through all the side quests before I figured out you had to kill off two factions and, you know, fuck the rest of the side quests if I can't finish them anyway. Um, so it seems really silly. And then, you know, again, on the same note, if you're just looking for someone with pure DNA, why not go to one of the other vaults? Why go to Vault 111? Why well, did you know that Vault 111 was the only one with people who were cryogenically frozen? Or maybe there's another one where they did a similar thing. But... I mean, there's no consistency there as to why that was done. There's no background in the Institute about the reason that was done, even though apparently there should be, considering Sean was able to look through the files of his own mother's shooting and his kidnapping, and then he's not even concerned about his mother being shot, and then allegedly gives a shit about you as a father. And when you play through the actual quest at the end, um... I guess this is the very fucking north this north, isn't it? The map's really surprisingly small for, you know, compared to like Skyrim. Skyrim, I felt like everything was gigantic. And in Skyrim, you had horses and shit, so you can actually get places faster. But I feel like they've really made it a lot smaller, the map size. So, you know, just another little gripe here. But, I mean, the story, I just feel like it's such utter shit, such poor writing that you wouldn't expect from Bethesda. Even if they don't have the most in depth storylines i mean a lot of the past games have been relatively straightforward but this one is not only straightforward it's short it belittles the idea that you've made so many quest lines and kills off two factions completely and you have like little things like companion side quests i haven't found as many side quests or as long quest lines just lurking around and the game leaves you with so many questions at the end of it now i talked to my friends about this who'd also played through it and uh, their thoughts were that the reason that the quest is so poor or so many questions are left unanswered is purely so that those people are gone so so purely that you could buy expansions and DLC to find out more shit and if that's the case I really don't give a fuck anymore you should be able to give me at least a complete story and then add to that story a little instead of leaving me with fucking a million whole plot with I mean, no other information, no, no real good reason why Sean was taken, no reason why I had the only fucking frozen vault, why you didn't go to a non-frozen vault and talk to people. It's just very frustrating. And I was really enjoying the game up until they, I felt like they fucked me at the end of the, of the story pretty much. And I mean, we talk about things like, um, there's a, a movie called Repo Man, and I'll spoil that here too for you. But pretty much, I think it's Jason Statham or something like that who's in it. And they live in a situation where the medical industry gives you like a heart transplant or whatever. And it costs pretty much an infinite amount of money. And if you can't pay for it, they just fucking yoink the shit from you and you die. So I feel like this game has an ending that's really similar. Pretty much at the end of that movie, you find out the guy actually gets crippled and is on life support. Oh, fuck. That awkward moment you forget that you're in a... Yeah, I'm in 
one of these guys. I'm gonna save. I just knocked my microphone. I'm just gonna save this real quick and get out of here. I might not even save this game, but um. So to the end of that movie, what happens is they discover that the main character, the protagonist, had actually gotten into an accident, and they had him on some life support, pretty much. And like he thought he was overthrowing the whole fucking system and doing all this shit. And what happened? The dude was fucking brain dead, and they had him on a machine. I feel like they kind of gave us that fuck you ending at the end of this game, too, where it's it's like there's, there's no point to the whole quest. It's like you just did it just to get the money from the goddamn game without giving a shit about what the actual storyline is. And I feel like that's just it's a cop-out. And for a game with a budget like this, it just seems really silly to... To go that way about it and I mean those that's my thoughts on the game and the story and there's a lot of questions and I mean uh, right now I'm, I'm probably gonna end this video soon because I don't want this running 30 minutes like it probably is right now but you have the dr. Virgil and one of the things that makes everything seem really shady is dr. Virgil leaves the Institute he's told that he's dead so you know father's you know, lying or bullshitting to some degree in the game, and that makes him seem kind of odd. I mean, you can tell that he's definitely the son of you and your wife because the way he looks in the game is actually determined by the way your character and your wife's character looks. I think this is the end of the fucking map, isn't it? Can I even swim up here? Alright, maybe it's not the end of the map. But, I mean, you could tell that he's definitely your son because otherwise his appearance shouldn't change based on your wife and your appearance. But that does happen. So I'll, I'll give it that he's definitely the son. You cannot go that way. Thank you for the imaginary wall, Bethesda. Can you give me some, like, epic loop in the corner of the world? But... So you have that, no one really tells you the Institute's bad, you could kind of just infer it by the people disappearing, but the people disappearing are since. So, I just, I don't get it. I don't get the plot. I don't understand why invest so much in the plot if you're going to make it that shitty and not answer the questions of it. So, I'm just really disappointed by that, the way that they decided to go about that. That's my main gripe. I mean, otherwise, if, if you just want to play the game for playing the game, you really can't go wrong, but the story literally made the rest of the game unplayable for me. I stopped caring about everything, because if you're going to say this is your main focal point and invest so much time to the game to that, and in the end make everything a big fuck you, then who gives a shit? I mean, why, why do it that way? Why leave so many plot holes? And that's just my main gripe. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on the game. Hopefully you let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed the video of me running around the middle of nowhere and not doing anything because the quest is fucking over and the side quests blow. I just think Bethesda could have done better. They opted not to. So I'm a little sad about that. But uh, again, guys, give me your thoughts here. I know I didn't talk too much about the settlement systems, the crafting systems. Again, they're not bad. It's not, it's not poorly done in that aspect, but uh, there's just like no motivation to continue playing the game at this point. And if you're going to explain everything on DLC. I'll be happy that you gave me the answers that I'm looking for in the game that aren't provided in any aspect, but I'm going to be disappointed that you're going to charge me in order to do that as opposed to have at least given me a full story for the beginning of the game would have been nice and then having some kind of extension of that. Maybe something even pre-war would be kind of cool, but I mean it is what it is. So uh, I hope, again, guys, let me know your thoughts on this. If you haven't played through the game, obviously, don't watch this video because I ruined fucking everything for you. And uh, I'll catch y'all later.